Hi everyone, Emma here. I'm so excited to show you how to make a leather wrap bracelet. This is a single wrap. For the sake of the video, we'll make it just the one way around your wrist. Um, and we're going to do a new technique, new to me. I have I remember seeing this when I was um, starting out. And um, I'm trying to think why I didn't do it. I can't remember now. I think maybe I like to be able to do everything with my right hand and just kind of position with the left. So the idea of having to use two needles and weaving back and forth, I felt was just adding one level of complexity that I didn't didn't need. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go ahead and do it in in all um, like to let you know <laughs> transparency here. I this is the first time I'm doing this. So um, I wanted to say hello to Shelly. She's the one that asked me last night. Have you ever done one of a, a leather bracelet with? I think she called it traditional and I think we talked about traditional ladder and a few other names for it. I had no idea what it was called. So I did do a little research and I did find and I I apologize I don't remember her name from Off the Beaten Path. She's wonderful. So she actually has a video and I will link it in the description showing you how to do it. So but we're going to go ahead and do it see what we come of this. Now some of the steps for just leather wrap bracelets entirely the way I do them. Um, I'm going to try, I'm going to go through pretty quickly so we can get to the uh, using the two needles and try and get it completed in a video. Um, but if you're, if there's things that you question about the video, like where I get my leather, why I use this thread, those kind of things, I have a playlist for all the leather videos and and it explains, I, you know, do the barrel knot tube. So for this one, we're going to do a barrel knot tube. So let's go over the equipment that we need or the supplies. So you do need a tube of some sort. So if you like these here, I just buy, um, like they come a hundred of them. They're called uh, tube beads. And when I got these, this is when I was purchasing off of eBay. I got them. They were tarnished like this and I ended up getting them for free because I I did a dispute and they gave me my money back, but they're super cheap. They're like, I mean, now they're probably a little more expensive, maybe three dollars for a hundred, but I mean, you need one and that's it. Um, you could probably pick them up at Michael's, something like this. Anyway, uh, we're gonna. You need one of those. If you don't have one of those, you can use a straw. I actually the other day saw somebody take a piece of paper and roll it up and put some tape on it and use that. So you could do that as well. I'm using a. Let me um, enlarge this so we can get right in here, and uh, we'll just leave this off the way it is because we're gonna need that. Um, our. Uh, our board to put stuff on so I kind of had the camera in a certain position it is hard to do leather wrap bracelets in a video because you there's so much space that you need to put things on but anyway TMI right <laughs> so I'm gonna use my beautiful pewter button I cannot find the lady that used to sell these on um, Etsy I probably have about 10 of them left but anyway, uh, I said pewter. I think actually this one's copper. You can see the copper underneath the finish. They're lovely and they have a nice big shank so that you can get your leather through. So speaking of leather, I am using this gorgeous leather. Um, this is Leather Cord USA and it's two millimeter round and it's natural violet. I just love this color. I don't know if you can... See, see if I can, there you go, get a better idea of the color. So I thought it would be really nice with these. These are cream colored pearls. So I thought kind of a boho look. And these are my Preciosa pearls. For me, I'm going to make a bracelet for my size. So I only need one strand. I'm just going to open this up. 
Try not to cut the strands. I've done that. <laughs> it's not friendship. So let me know if you've done this technique before. And if you have any hints for me, I really appreciate it. So let's get rid of that. And we have to... Do you know what? I think I'm going to leave it on the strand and just cut a strand off this way so these strands actually this looks like 50 I'm only gonna need half and I've got my ruler here I'm only gonna need half a strand but we'll cut the whole strand off on this side that was my finger let me just go to here. So when I say half the strand, if this, this does look like a 50 to me, that means I only need 20, usually 24. These are six millimeter pearls, by the way. Apologize. I think we need more. We'll, we'll just hang on to this and we'll grab more when we need them. We can set those aside. You're going to need two needles. Now let's talk about the thread along with it. I use Coates Extra Strong Upholstery Thread. You can get this at um, Walmart or your Notion store, wherever you do get your sewing stuff. And um, I use it because it's 100% nylon and it will not break, it will not um, like pill up when you, you know, move stuff across it. So. I'm just going to grab, I'm just going to grab a wingspan. Um, because I've never done this before, sometimes what I like to do is um, have all of my thread on so that I don't have to make um, knots or anything like that but we're just going to do a wingspan for the sake of this video and if I have to show you how to attach it I'll do that and I also forgot my wax here so I use wax because this is nylon you don't necessarily need to use wax but you can see how it's all curly from being on the spool I like to do the wax it unfurls all those curls and just you know, undo it as you're going here, because if you don't, that will knot up. But you can see it's already pulling it out a bit. So let's get that going there. And I sometimes do it twice. Let me. I think that should be good. So needles, I'm using size 10 needles. These are super inexpensive needles that I got on AliExpress. They're supposed to be pony needles, but you can see <laughs> they're like, they're not ponies, they're deers. Anyway, um, they're, I, to be fair, they're crappy needles, but uh, I've since <laughs> upped my game. But I'll tell you what, they're good for this because they have really big eyes. And using this thread is, um, is difficult at times because it's, thick but I'll tell you what too is this thread is great because it will go through um, smaller beads so remember that what you're putting on your bracelet test it out first so make sure the holes are big enough to have the thread pass through multiple times um, I made that mistake in the beginning of doing bracelets like this because it was just um, you know, didn't know kind of thing. So the other thing I have is my nippers. I use that to cut a nice clean edge off of my leather, but you can use your scissors. So we'll just hang on to that. Definitely your ruler. I also have a piece of um, waxed cord. You can use whatever you have, a shoelace or whatever um, piece of wool. This is to attach my... Um, 
my bracelet before I put anything on it, like once the button's on, onto my board. And then we can talk about the board. So the board just quickly, this is a ring tray from Michael's. And I pull out the sponge and you can see where it was glued in. And then just cut a piece of beading mat to put over top and I use these for everything your beads you don't lose your beads and I actually like tuck the pieces of thread that I cut off underneath and then clean it later so we have this so what we're going to do with this I'm just going to take the piece and do a knot at the bottom and so it creates a loop like that so let's just put that in there and we'll set that aside with the, the tray and I'll put our needles aside. And I think we're pretty well ready to go. Um, I'll, I'll just quickly show you how to measure your wrist. If you're not familiar with that, if you are, just scoot forward. So I had to actually double check my wrist. Um, I think my wrist is like six. It's actually under six inches, but the best thing to do is find the biggest spot on your wrist and use that as your measurement. You don't want your bracelet to be super tight. So just take your piece of string, whatever you have. It's hard to do on the video. Like that and bring it to the the biggest area go like that and then pinch where you've got and then just go to your ruler so you can see mine six so I am going to add a half an inch and the reason I, we talk about that is um, the half inch is to give it some space and you might even want to add a full inch depending on you know how chunky your button is and your beads and stuff like that and your knots that you're going to put in so just remember that will affect it, but also remember that the leather will stretch over time too. So figure out what suits you best. So then if you think about a leather wrap bracelet, you have leather on two sides. So we're going to need six and a half inches for mine. And we're also going to add the both sides. So now we need 13 inches. I always take that 13 inches and add another width of my wrist for the knots and for anything at the end. You can also just double it up again. So we said 13 inches, I would go to 26 inches. And I'll tell you why, because at the end, we're going to put little tassels at the end. And if you've measured your leather exactly right, it'll be hard to put those little tassels in. Um, and what I do is I leave enough leather at the end. So then when I cut my pieces of leather at the end can be used for something else. So just a little trick that I do. So let's get this guy out and measure it. So we're going to do, I said, uh, 13 and then another six. 18 inches okay so I've got 12 here Twelve and six I think I'm gonna do 24 just to be safe but you don't have to cut your I do have video showing in detail about measuring and cutting so Definitely take a look if this was not enough for you. And I like to just pull it through my hands to soften it a bit. And you see it's there. So, and before I do anything with it, I'm going to measure it again, just against, just to make sure. So yeah, that looks good. Let's pull this down. We are going to put our button on. Let me move these guys up here. And just get that in there. Take your pieces together and find your midpoint and just pinch it a little. Grab your 
two bead. I haven't done this, a lot of this stuff in a long time. Just moving things over. I feel like I'm sitting in a movie theater and somebody's elbowing, elbowing me. It's my bead tray. Grab, you can grab the top or the bottom, doesn't matter. And you're going to go around with your leather and you're going to go towards your button. I'm going to do three times around like that. Pinch it with your other fingers. And I'll just go this way. Put the end that you twisted around through the two bead. Now pinch the other way, pull that through, and bring this through. Now you can see there's quite a bit of space here. We're going to hang on to these two, and we're going to just squinch our knot, our tube knot, all the way to the end. Like that. There. Now the the hole for this is a bit um, big for this leather. So you see how it's flipping around. I don't like when it does that because this might your bracelet might come loose, like the the other part might come off. So let's tuck it as close as we can get it. There, that's better. It's not moving around. Okay, and so now if you see your one side is shorter than the other, so when we go to finish off and put a knot at the end, we're going to use the long one to do that knot so it will even out. So don't worry. In the meantime, we're going to go down to here and we're going to put a loose knot and that's going to help us put it on our, um, our board to hold on to things. So like that. Just to make sure that that doesn't come out. There. Okay, I'm gonna move some of this stuff aside to get our board out. And here comes the board. I may need a different tray for this. Here, let's, let's put it at the corner here. Okay. That do right. So we are going to attach it on either side. So let me make sure that's long enough. <laughs> I usually have too much thread. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop that piece over here. You can leave it just like that so it's nice and easy to get off. And bring it around the bottom of your board. And then bring it up to this part here. We're going to slide this through where we had the knot. And... We're going to pull it down and yeah, I could have used a little bit longer on this so that it would tie off. So let me flip this so I can see if I can get a knot in here. That's a little, little small. See if I can get this into a knot. And usually I put a slip knot in here too so that it comes off easy. But there we go. That should do it. And that's what I was saying about these. Okay. This is really not a smooth process when you're doing it on a video. Just because it's there's so much. And you know what? I see so many people do videos and 
they they either forget that they're so um, far out on the screen because it takes so much to to show you this part of it. So, but let's let's. And I usually like this to be a little tighter. Let's throw this on here. There we go. Thank you for uh, bearing with me. It's not always like perfect. Okay, so we're set. What you can do is you can take this one of the pieces of this and loop it around to tighten it. There. That's a little better. You want some tension. And I'm just going to... There. So let's get our needles threaded and get going. Don't need that right now. So let's take a look at our thread. And see if we can get these guys threaded. Sweet. Now, you don't have to fold over a whole lot of this because we're using both threads. Normally, if I'm doing one needle, I'll pull a lot through, but so there is a technique in leather work that they use. And I, you know what, I better not show you. I have to practice it first. But anyway, you you lock your thread in. But this should be fine. I'll, I'll give a little more space there on that one. Make sure that's not knotted. And yes, that one. This one's a little, I could tell the thread was a little thicker at that spot, but look at that. So if you can't get your thread through a beading needle, use a sewing needle. That's what I used for all of my stuff. Now I'm going to find the midpoint. And actually I might just do it this way. So I'm taking one needle on each side of the, the leather and finding the midpoint. This is the only time you have to do this because once your your um your first bead is on your thread's always going to be the correct length. So, grab one of your beads and let me make sure I have the okay, I flip them here. There we go. So, got it like that. Take your bead, put it on your needle, and just let it pass through like that. And just remember to go on the correct side. So, this part is a little kind of fiddly at the beginning. So, just remember that you should be going in with your second needle on the side that the thread from the first needle is going through. It, it probably sounds like a lot of confusing information, but it is important. And I'm being careful not to poke my thread and then pull this through. Oh, let's, um, you're going to line up your needles again. And you know what? Let me make sure that the thread tail length is the same on both needles because you don't want to mess up your length on one side. So I'll see how it, let's just make sure, just pull that out and even it out here. your th 
threads. So this is this is why I don't use this method. <laughs> but it's really pretty and for some people it's easier than the way I do it. So as you can see, the bead is sitting on top of the leather. We don't want that. We want it to sit in the leather. So first of all, it's going to go down a bit because it's going to take a bit of leather to get that space there. But the other part to this is we're going to take and we're going to take our needle and bring it under. So our right side needle, we're going to bring it under the right side leather like that. And we're going to put it through the bead. Bring this down. I was going to say, let me know if you can all see this. I'm like, Emma, you're not doing a live. <laughs> okay, so let me just put that one there. And let's take this one, go through this side. And again, I'm just pushing my needle to the top of the bead hole so that it doesn't poke my thread that I just passed through. I can feel some resistance there. This is the only one that you do this multiple thing with. There we go. And you can see it starts to get snug. Now what this is going to do, it should, if we did it right, let me just, my threads. Oh, that's weird. That is strange. I must have had the wrong thing through and I just, uh, okay, so we have to start this over. This is not correct. It's only on one strand, so clearly I took it off of the strand. So let me let me go back. I this is the one that needs to be attached. So let's just yeah, I think we need to start this over. I don't want to I can fix this, but I don't want to confuse you. Just, I'm going to take my needles through backwards so that I don't poke the thread. There we go. Let's try this again. And it's a bit tangled here. And of course, it's... Let's take this out. So we start with our thread underneath our leather. And then we are going to pick up. You know what? I This is not the way that it was shown in the video that I watched from I, I watched a few and this is how they start I think we're going to just do it this way so you have your pearl and your threads are underneath each side so I'm just going to double check the length again yeah it wasn't at the right length okay <laughs> my wife's going pearl knit pearl pearl she has no idea that's not, that's really not beating. That <laughs> she goes, I don't know what that means. Bring me the oh, she said 30 minute warning. She lied to me. She said we were doing, we we're going to the gym at 4.30. It's now 3.30. You said 4.30. That's what we leave here at 4. Okay. I don't have enough time to do this video. Okay, we're, I guess we're not leaving it for this. No, 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 I'm going to stop. Because I'm messing up the beginning part. So i got to do it all over. Yeah, it sounds like you're having fun. <laughs> uh, 
I um I I let the camera go for that. I am gonna quit and and go back and see how. I wish I could remember her name. She's so nice. But this is not working. Look at that. That's just. Okay. So let's go through. I'm determined. What I was going to say is I let the camera go because sometimes I've done videos that I felt were not. Um, I didn't feel comfortable putting them out there as a video and I've talked to a lot of subscribers and they're like no show us we want to we want to see so so actually that looks pretty good so that was that was my technique so now to follow the, the next technique you're going to take your right hand thread under you're going to do the same for the other side maybe that's what I, I forgot to do was to twist the thread on the other side grab your bead like that and then you're going to take your other side needle go through I'm going to hang on to it pull So this one here, the top one, seems to be sitting high, and I think that's because of the way I did it. So I think the technique that um, the lady from Off the Beaten Path is correct. There's got to be a way to keep that cinched in a little. So I will be back with a proper tutorial. This is, we may start right from the beadboard and I'll uh, edit stuff so that just edit the end so that you can get your supplies together. So this is going to be beautiful. <laughs> we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.